free fall and stretch. So you might have seen in the animated cartoons the uh, comic effect of characters uh, stretching as they uh, fall. However, uh, even though you might imagine that the force of gravity would uh, cause uh, things to stretch, especially if they're flexible, uh, in reality gravity does not stretch falling objects. Uh, even uh, things like raindrops are not physically stretched as they fall. In fact, uh, rather the opposite happens. When we have a true free fall, so we have only the force of gravity and no significant uh, air resistance or any other forces, then uh, in a true free fall uh, we have a weightless uh, condition. And in fact, uh, in order to train astronauts for uh, weightless conditions that they uh, would encounter in, in similar uh, things, say in the uh, space station and such, uh, NASA has an airplane for uh, training um, astronauts in free fall. This research aircraft is the ultimate roller coaster ride, peaking at 34,000 feet over the Gulf of Mexico. The plane follows a parabolic flight path to produce weightlessness. So you see a typical these flight consists of about 32 are... arcs. As the plane climbs towards the top of the parabola, passengers feel the force of nearly two so. G's, or twice their body weight. So they're Once the plane starts up. to go over the top of the invisible arc and begins descending back toward Earth, flyers free fall, experiencing nearly so. 25 seconds of zero gravity. The so you see in that um, free fall condition when they're uh, going downwards, uh, the, um, are the people inside the plane are basically weightless. And you want them inside the plane with this so that uh, they're shielded from the air resistance that you might have as, a, uh, for example, if you were a, a, a skydiving. Now, um, you might have seen this in some, uh, some films, for example, in the uh, plane crash scene in uh, Madagascar 2, there's a part where the um, uh, characters are uh, in uh, free fall, weightless free fall, and floating around in the cabin. Uh, but in other parts, they uh, they don't have uh, free fall. Now, uh, getting back to uh, stretch, uh, there is a noticeable uh, stretching that occurs uh, when objects are moving, but this is not that the objects are uh, physically stretching, but they visually appear to stretch uh, due to motion blur. Uh, we also see this in photographs, depending on the uh, exposure time of the uh, photo. Now, uh, this uh, is interesting because there's a connection with the uh, perception of motion. So perception of motion is the fundamental requirement uh, for realism in, in animation. So um, of course in animation we're actually seeing a sequence of images, but we the brain interprets these images as being uh, motion. So they connects the different um, images as being, for example, for this bouncing ball of actually a single ball that's uh, moving through space. Uh, sometimes this is called persistence of vision, but actually that's uh, something different. Now, uh, I, I mentioned this because uh, you know that if you, for example, have a strobe light and you uh, move your arms quickly uh, or dance around, uh, this perception of motion is uh, disrupted and instead of uh, seeing the uh, fluid uh, motion of, say, waving your arms, instead you see it as a sequence of um, disconnected images. Now, in animation, when the uh, action is slow, then the overlapping of an object from one frame to the next, or at least the proximity of objects and characters from one frame to the next, helps maintain the perception of motion. On the other hand, if the action occurs quickly, so that uh, there's a large gap between, 
successive um, images, then uh, this can disrupt the perception of motion and uh, in animation this is known as strobing. So here's uh, some uh, examples where um, the case on the left, uh, the there's not enough um, images and especially near the bottom the ball seems to uh, disappear and reappear uh, whereas on the right uh, with more um, frames of seeing the ball uh, in motion uh, it preserves the perception of motion. Uh, strobing is uh, more noticeable in your peripheral vision so if you just uh, turn your head and watch this from the side uh, it's um, even more no the strobing is even more noticeable. Now uh, this is connected to stretch because uh, in animation to minimize this uh, strobing effect often uh, drawings are stretched in order to reduce the amount of blank space uh, between successive drawings um, on successive frames. So uh, by eliminating that uh, blank space uh, we tend to preserve the um, uh, perception of motion and so stretch is very useful in, uh, in this regard. And again since stretch is somewhat natural due to motion blur it's uh, not entirely uh, unrealistic or, or doesn't look um, unrealistic or unbelievable. Uh, this uh, idea of using a stretch uh, was actually extended and became a, a unique style in uh, some uh, classic cartoons. Uh, the uh, Dover Boys is maybe one of the best examples of this type of uh, use of stretch, sometimes called smear animation. And uh, if you watch the Dover Boys and you go frame by frame, uh, while you're watching playing the animation playing at full speed, you don't you don't notice the um, stretch so much. But going frame by frame, you notice these extremely distorted uh, images of the of the characters. Uh, you uh, notice the uh, the bottle uh, becomes huge. The bartender's hand is huge. These are all um, frames from uh, parts in the um, animation where the action is very quick, and so uh, this stretch and uh, smear just appears as um, more natural motion blur. But it's not blurring things out. Uh, just um, exaggerated stretching. Uh, this was even used in the um, stop motion uh, film uh, Paranorman where they actually had individual uh, face plates with um, stretch for uh, showing motion blur of the uh, of the face in the character when the when the action was was quick. So in uh, summary the uh, force of gravity does not physically stretch objects as they fall. Uh, characters in free fall are actually in a weightless uh, state. Uh, fast objects visually appear to stretch uh, due to motion blur. And since um, strobing is a visual artifact that can disrupt the perception of motion if there's too much uh, spacing between a sequence of images, uh, we find that it's useful to use motion blur and stretch or smear uh, to minimize this uh, strobing effect. So that uh, there you have it, uh, stretch and motion.